know Christ, a television ministry of the Lutheran Church of Peace in Platteville, Wisconsin. Here is your host, Rev. Jeff Peterson. Well, today we're going to be talking about the importance of why it's important to be, to be sharing our faith in this day, in this age, and that we should be like what the Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 1, uh, verses 16 and 17, that we are not ashamed of the gospel because this is the power of God to bring salvation not only to ourselves but to the whole world. And so it's important because, well, first of all, God loves us and God wants to be in relationship. He wants to redeem this world that he loves. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And so that's what God's work in this world is, is to have a relationship with each one of us. And that it's God's intent to save the whole world. I mean, God's not just after a few people. God's not just after a neighborhood or just the people who belong to my church, but rather God's purpose and his work is to save the whole world. I mean, Jesus is a big enough savior to save the whole world. Like in all stewardship is that God has given for us a work to do. And that work is to be part of this bringing salvation to the world. I mean, the work has been done. Salvation has been won. Jesus Christ is arisen from the dead. Now he gives the work for us to do, to go and share this good news, that we pray that the fields are ready and ripe for harvest. So as we share this good news of the gospel, that people will want to hear it, receive our Lord Jesus Christ, and to live in the salvation that God has so graciously and so freely given to us. But there's something else, and that has to do with, I would say, an urgency, meaning that life doesn't go on forever. And so there's a couple of ways of looking at this. Number one, it doesn't go on forever for any one of us. We do not know the day or the hour for which, which we will die. You know, we certainly hope that we can have a good long life. But the reality of it is, is that in any one given day, our life can be snuffed out. Just this past week, a very dear member of the church that I serve, he was driving along and, and he was in a car accident. And just in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, his life was taken. I mean, none of us has any more of a guarantee than our next heartbeat. And so we must always be ready. Be ready for that day when, when, when we die. And the urgency is, is that we want to live in heaven and we don't want to be condemned to hell. But God is more than just for dying. God is to be with us in our living. That God gives us strength for today and hope for tomorrow but that God guides us in this life, that we are living our lives for his glory and for his honor, working and serving for his purposes. And one of those big purposes is that we are sharing our faith with others, that we are bringing other people into the fold, into Christ's church. Because the other thing is that we do not know when Jesus will return. We're living in what we call the millennium, and the millennium, as we read in Revelation, has to do with not so much a literal 1,000 years it has, as it has to do with a time period. And that would have to be with the end times. And what the end times are is from the time that Jesus ascended into heaven until the time that he comes uh, back again. And so that's the millennium, the end times, this period. And I don't know how long it will go. Jesus says, nobody knows the day or the hour but God when Christ will return. But yet, 
as we read in the scriptures, we see that there are a lot of signs, a lot of indications that we need to be aware of so that we know that we are living in these end times. Now is not the time to become apathetic in our faith. Now is not the time to be intellectualizing, thinking, oh yeah, faith, it's just nothing more than, than a myth. No, when we study the Bible and as we look at history and as we see what's going on in our world today, that we see that the things about the Bible, well, there's nothing. There's nothing uh, else that will indicate or show us more of the times that we're living in and what, what the prophecy has shown. And so we need to be aware of these times and we need to recognize the times and the seasons. And so we, well, we look at you know, such uh, Bible readings as Matthew chapter 24, where Jesus gives a lot of instruction concerning the end times and knowing the time that we are living in. I read from Matthew chapter 24, uh, verses 32 through uh, 34, actually 35. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all the things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So one of the things in Palestine and Israel would be the, the fig tree, the olive trees, when they are very prevalent. And as you look at a tree, you can, kind of, you can tell the time and the seasons. As I'm recording this, well, we're kind of getting toward the end of the fall season as I look at the trees. I still have a couple of maple trees that are beautiful. They still have colors on their, on their leaves, but those leaves are going to be coming down really fast. And so I know, based just looking at the tree, what time of the year it is. It's late fall, and we're needing to get ready now for the winter. I have those signs to say, you know, it's time to start preparing for the winter. We may not like it, but that's the reality of it. Whereas in the spring, we also can look at the tree and we can see the signs. Oh, yeah, I can see signs here that spring is coming. The dead of winter is over and I start seeing some buds on the trees. And, and then we know that it's summer. and we, It's a time of where I can look at the tree and it's bearing its fruit. And so that's what Jesus is saying is that you need to know the times for which we are living in right now. They're out there. And I think most all of you that are watching this is that you can look at nature and you can see signs of what season it is. And other things about your life, you can see signs to tell you. So yeah, nobody, so somebody's going around saying, well, you know that in, on, on July 14th, the year 2023, that Jesus is going to return. Well, you know that that's not true because that Jesus says nobody knows the day or the hour. And if that were to happen, it would be just by coincidence. But yet we do need to know what the signs are. We need to look at the signs. And let's not be caught off guard. You know, I think about what Jesus wrote here as we look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. 
the days of Noah. That's one of those stories. One of those stories that is in the first 11 chapters of the Bible in Genesis. And those stories are theological stories. They really help us help formulate the theology of the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, there's so much history and, and there's so many stories. And what helps us to understand those stories is the theology that we read in the first 11 chapters. And so we see the theology of the first 11 chapters unfolding. Okay, but the days of Noah, what was going on here? Well, we see where sin has taken its toll and God is getting frustrated. You know, nobody was worshiping God. Nobody was obeying his commandments. God was not having the fellowship that he so wanted with his people. And the world just began to become more and more evil, just exactly the way that God didn't want it to be. And that's the thing, is that when we ex God out of society, then, then our world and life becomes exactly the way that God doesn't want it to be. And so we all need to be having this push of, we need to get God into everything in our society. So we may honor the Lord, and as we honor the Lord, that he blesses us. And that we have his principles in life. That we honor those in authority. That we do not kill. That we do not steal. That we aren't committing adultery and other sexual sins. That we are, that we are speaking the truth and not conjuring up lies about our neighbors. And that we are thankful for what belongs to our neighbor and that we don't cover what, what belongs to our neighbor and that we are not greedy, self-centered self people. We're looking to lord it over and to dominate over others, but rather we want to be thankful, generous people where we're always looking out to the needs of others, especially, especially those who go without. And so we're getting this idea of what the day was like during the time of Noah. But as Noah was building his ark, and as he's building his ark, prophesying you know, that there's going to be this big flood coming and God is going to destroy all humanity. And that it was kind of the last plea of repentance, but the whole world was, ha, ha, we don't believe in this, Noah. We don't believe in God. We don't believe in your silly myths. And in ancient times, that's oftentimes what they looked upon God as being. Is belief in God is just believing in some mythological, some fairy tale. And so as they would laugh at Noah, you know, this crazy case of a guy building his big ship out in the middle of the desert that he continued to build in faith. And when that flood came, it came in a way where it, it came to where it caught them all off guard. Now here again, even though you know, they were being preached and saying, you know, worship the Lord thy God and obey God in your lives, they became very, well, they became very deaf and, and blind to the things of God. Just, you know, their whole heart was callous toward God. And so it caught them out. The flood came. It caught them off guard. And the people perished. And so that's the way that it is for us. Is that Christ will come again. Death comes. And when that final day comes, it's all going to happen so fast. The Christ is going to come. You know, a lot of people will say, well, you know those crazy people that are going around saying that they are Jesus and you, know, you can generally see that they are needing some psychiatric care. And then I hear people say, well, just think if one of them really uh, is Jesus. It's like, no. <laughs> when Christ comes again, it's going to happen so fast that we, we won't even know it hit us. The trumpet will sound. The dead will be raised, and those who are in Christ Jesus will be all taken, caught up together, and God will take us home to his heavenly kingdom. 
there's not going to even be time to have a discussion. Is this some weirdo, or is this, or are we to take this person seriously? No, it's God will take care of his business. But that's where we need to be prepared in this day. And it's sad because I see so many people where they just don't take their religious life seriously at all. If anything, it's just one of those compartmentalized things that are over here. You know, maybe I'll think about it at Christmas, maybe Easter. Highly unlikely, though, because I've got so much going on with my life. And here again, you know, we're always kind of thinking about, you know, the people who are not in the church, the people who are not saved are just kind of these wicked, evil people. Well, no, most of them are very nice people. Very conscientious people as far as their lives and what matters to them. But, but as far as God, I'd say for a lot of people, they just don't have time for it. It's just we don't have time. And, and, our, and our lives are so filled with all the good things that we want in life that, well, if I ever have time for God, it's going to have to come at some futuristic time. But right now, I'm having such a wonderful time frolicking in my little empire that I have created. And that's the danger of it all. And so as we say, well, Pastor Jeff, we really are kind of skeptical about all of this. What are some of these signs that you can give to us? Well, one of them is that, remember, God called Abraham and Sarah, and it's from their descendants, that we, have the is that we have the nation of Israel. And so you always have to be kind of looking at what's happening with Israel because, you know, so much of godly history is connected with Israel. What's going on with Israel? You always have to be asking that question. In the year 70 AD, there was, uh, well, there was an emperor by Nero and then, and then Titus, a lot of persecution where Israel was, or excuse me, Jerusalem was destroyed, the temple was destroyed. And so we call it a diaspora, where, where the Jewish people, God's people, they scattered into the world. But it's prophesied that the day will come when they will, where they will become a nation again and, and where they will return back to the land of, of Israel. And we see that in 1948 that Israel became a nation again and, and Jews from all over the world have been now going back to Israel. And so that's a big sign of the, the end. And so I'll read from Luke chapter uh, 21, verse 24. Jesus said, They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And so that, here again, every verse in the Bible, every sentence in the Bible is so powerful. And it's just so, so filled with so much wisdom. And under, but what Jesus is saying is that, yeah, Israel will be attacked. In a sense, the rod will strike them and they will scatter. The sheep will scatter all over the world. But then, as he says, the day will come when they will begin to return. And right now, because of what's going on, there's a window of opportunity for the Gentiles. And Gentiles are non-Jewish people, so like myself, that we can come uh, to have faith in Jesus Christ. We can have salvation in Jesus. But that window of opportunity will close. You know, there's a couple of other things that we need to look at when it comes to Israel. And one would be, the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem, and that happens. We know that we're really getting close to the end times. But, the, but another thing would be is that the day will come when Israel as a nation will receive Jesus as a Savior. And we read about this in Romans chapter 11. The Apostle Paul explains it so well that, that the day will come when the Jewish people will receive Jesus as their Savior and their Lord, and that all then will be made complete Right now, saying that you know, God, in a sense, has made a veil, has hardened their hearts, have kind of made them blind and deaf to Jesus. But the day will come when that veil will be lifted, and all of a sudden, what they couldn't see, they now see, and they will receive the Savior. But for all of us, whether we are Jews or Gentiles, that we, 
you know, we certainly look to Jesus as being the Savior. And, and that's what gives us the peace and the strength to, to live and to work in, in these end times, to be God's people. A second thing, one has to do with immorality. That, well, as we learn about the story of, as we learn about the story of Noah, we see that there was a lot of immorality at the time. And that ark that Noah made, I must say, is for us today, where is our ark? It's the church. And that's why sharing our faith is so important, is that we want to bring as many people into that ark as we can. Because here again, it's God's desire that, that all be saved. That it's God's desire. I mean, he, he loves the whole world. He wants the whole world to be saved. I mean, that's his intent. And so this is where we all need to be working and being part of God's work in this world and just seeing how God is working and, and being excited about that. Bringing in as many people into the church before that door closes. And so I think about that it will be a time of great immorality. And so I read from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, Unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I mean, isn't that something? Doesn't that explain so much of it right there as far as immorality? I mean, as I read that, you could say, oh yeah, that's society today. Matter of fact, I just got done reading the newspaper or watching the news or just, you know, just knowing what we also feel within our own hearts. A third thing has to do with wars and rumors of wars, and that gets us back to Matthew chapter 24, verses 6 through 8. And I read, But you, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdoms against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquake in various places. All these are the beginning of the birth pangs. And so we see war has been part of history, and war is an awful time. Nobody likes war, and and here again, I'm not a female, but I know the pain that my wife went through in burying our children, the birth pangs leading up to that birth. And so that's a lot of what this is, is the birth pangs leading up to the salvation, a new life, of eternal life, that we have to go through these times of suffering. And so as we look at some of the awful wars that have been throughout history, those are some pretty intensive contractions, and we see that there's war today. But that's a sign. Earthquakes, verse uh, 7, chapter 24, verse 7, that there will be earthquakes and natural disasters, and we see the intensity of all these as well. I can't tell you just this year how many people say, well, this is the one in every 500-year flood that we are now getting every few years, or the one in every 500-year hurricane, or the one in every 500-year fire. I mean, we've gotten them all this year. And so the intensity, the power, the magnitude of these natural disasters, but that's, always, that's all a sign that we're getting close to the end times. You know, here again, those birth pangs, and it's hard to see how people are suffering from all these things. We read in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, that we we start to see that, you know, world travel, that there'll be world travel today. And I must say that, well, my daughter's a flight attendant, and so she can get me tickets, and I can fly. To, I've flown to a lot of places in the world, and it's been very interesting. It's given me an opportunity to go to places, to be able to study about, about the church, and, 
It's just fascinating to see other lands, but that's also uh, a sign of the end and, uh, and also the world economy. That we're not just uh, trading with our neighbors as far as the next town over, but now it's one nation trading with another nation and you know, as far as the whole global economy. So if, the economy, if one nation's economy is suffering, well then we all suffer as a result because we are all so interconnected with that. But that's a sign of the end times. Uh, here again, when we read in uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 4, uh, verse uh, 1, <clears throat> Or, excuse me, I'll go back to Matthew chapter 24, uh, verse 15. We find this, that there's going to be an increase in devil worship and occult practices. So when you see, standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. And that there will be a rise of wickedness, there will be a rise of of Satan worship and in the old cult. And I'll look, see if I can find 1 Timothy chapter 4 here. That maybe will explain it a little bit better. The Spirit clearly says that in later times there will, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiver, deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. And so we see here again that it will be an increase in the old cult. As far as people doing spiritist things, psychic kinds of things, uh, mediums, all these things where there's going to be so much uh, demon worship and things. But then along those lines, too, is that there will be an increase in faith. I mean, there's not going to be too much lukewarm as far as um, people in faith. And a lot of times we look at people and they're kind of lukewarm in their faith. It's like, well, yeah, I believe, but I really don't practice. Well, there's, that, it's going to either be people are going to be really hot or really cold. There's, in the end times, people are going to really become excited to become believers or they're going to just become very cold, very dead toward it. And I've seen that. I've seen where all of a sudden people just ignite in their faith and in others that once were faithful, but now they really have no interest in, in godly things. Their faith has pretty much been snuffed out. And so that's where... You know, we're living in these end times and we need to just know the days and the times, but we need to be sharing our faith, lifting high the cross, and encouraging people to, you know, to come into the fold, to come into that ark, the, the church, because the signs are there that Christ could come at any time. You have been watching To Know Christ, Reverend Jeff Peterson, pastor of the Lutheran Church of Peace in Buckley, Wisconsin. For a donation of $15 or more, you can receive a copy of Pastor Peterson's latest book, Prayer, A Practical Guide to Getting God's Direction. Thank you for watching and tune in again next week for To Know Christ.